All right. So um, first, I just want to tell you that I am Christina, the e-learning student support specialist here. Um, I'm here for you Monday through Thursday from like 9 to 4. You can call me. Um, my number you can find on the website, but it is also 614-6488 um, if you guys need that. And I'm located on the fourth floor of the library um, in D409, but you can definitely find my information um, in a bunch of spots. I can show you those as we go through this orientation. All right, so today we're going to cover um, what it means to be in an online class. Um, if you ever take a hybrid, I can tell you what that is as well. Um, how to navigate Blackboard, um, how to get to it, how to contact your professors, and how to do some discussions and assignments that you might be asked to do in your class. So first, um, you guys do know online is just going to be completely online. You don't ever have to come to the school um, unless specified by your instructor. In his notes, he might tell you maybe you have to take the final exam here on campus, but most of the times it's just 100% online. If you ever do take a hybrid class, um, that you might meet one or two times a week on campus, um, and then the rest of your coursework will be done online as well. So for an online class, since you won't be attending, you're going to have to log in a few times a week um, at least, and that'll be how they take attendance. They can track how many times you've gone into your course. So it's definitely good to make some time and plan it out now to get in a few times a week, see what you have to get done. Um, some discussions, they might have some dates where you need to specifically log in and do something on certain days, but your instructor will definitely, you know, make that clear in all of his um, paperwork and any of the syllabuses that he has posted. So I'm going to get started here and go to our college webpage. This is probably going to be the easiest way to get to Blackboard. So if you see right on top where it says Quick Links, you open up that menu, and you'll see Blackboard Learn right under here under Popular Links. Click on that. And this is your login page. Um, if you've registered already and you've gotten your letter mailed to you, with your TWOLF username and password, that is going to be the same login information you use for Blackboard. So hopefully you guys have gotten that, so you can maybe just try and do this as we go through. I'm gonna log in with my information. Okay, and this is what your My Institution page or the home page will look like. Now I'm going to go over some really important stuff that you have right here without even getting into a class yet. Um, right here you'll see our open SUNY orientation. Um, I suggest if you ever get lost in a class and don't know like, oh I forgot how to submit a blog or how do I do this kind of entry or something about a test, it's always really nice to have this orientation. It gives you a lot of the different um, tips on how to log in. It gives you a lot of information on how to take tests or do assignments or even send emails and messages through Blackboard. I'm just going to go back to my institution page. Um, right here on this module, it's labeled My Courses. This is where all of your classes are going to be listed. If you are taking any face-to-face um, -face classes, you might see them here, but if you click on them and you don't see anything, don't get worried. Um, most face-to-face -face courses will not use Blackboard, but if you are using it, your professor will let you know. Uh, the organizations module, this is going to show you any organizations you've been put in. Um, if you are taking an online class, you've been put into an e-learning um, Blackboard group, so you should see that there. And this is a very important box right here, the Open SUNY Browser Capability. 
This is always important to check every time you log on. Um, you have to make sure you have all the green check marks or else some of the information might not be processed and you might not be able to see it. And it gives you step-by-step -step instructions in case you do have any red X's. So it's always good to check before you get into any of your work that you're all green and you're good to go. Um, another side note that's really important to remember is try not to use Blackboard in Internet Explorer. There seems to be some problems with exams and assignments where Blackboard doesn't really work well and it might even kick you out of like an exam in the middle of it. So just try to use Google Chrome or Firefox. And you'll see um, on your page as well that you're going to have a lot of information for help. We have spring training dates still coming up once the semester gets started and an awesome section of videos. This is an orientation that was done last semester and we also have a lot of videos either made by the e-learning department or made by um, the Blackboard community on how to do simple things like viewing your grades, course messages, and stuff like that. Another really important feature on this page is this T-Wolves email box. From this, you can go and log into your T-Wolves email account without getting on a Blackboard. It's really neat. I can show you. Once you click on it, it brings you to this page. You can automatically log in and check your emails that way. Um, it's very important to always check your T-Wolves account. That is how our school will um, contact you since we are a paperless school now. Once you've gotten your acceptance letter and important logon information, most of the things you get from NCCC will come to your email rather than mail to your house. So it's always good to check that. So I'm going to get started by explaining um, the tabs at the top. Everyone will have a My Institution tab. That is your home page. You can click it and check it out. It'll bring you back to where you first log in. The next tab over is Courses. So this will just give you all the courses that you're enrolled in, and they'll show up right there for you. Community is going to be the organizations and group you're involved in. So all of your organizations will show up there. Next, content collection. This is actually a really neat um, tool. If you're ever on campus or maybe away from like a home computer, forgot your flash drive and you need to save some information and take it with you, a lot of times I just like save things in emails and have it there, but this is a really cool thing Blackboard has made where you can upload your own files so I can show you how to do that. There's a tab right here for uploading. You can upload multiple files by dragging them into this area, or you can upload individually with like a single file. Browse your computer, attach it, and hit submit. And that'll leave whatever you've uploaded into your content collection. You'll have it every time you log on to Blackboard. So anytime you just forgot the junk drive or maybe you're not at home doing work and need to take it with you, it's an awesome thing to remember. Last but not least, we have resources and policies. This is going to be basically all the information that one would get in like a student handbook or the agenda all of our policy and service help, disability disclosure, and these links will take you straight to the college website where these are found. And again, you still have all the helpful tools from Open SUNY. This box right here, it did show up on most of the other pages as well, is another Open SUNY um, way to get help. So if you ever needed Blackboard help and maybe I wasn't in the office or it's later at night, even on a Saturday. You can come to this area right here or wherever it mentions like Open SUNY Support Help Desk. You can either call the number or you can submit a help desk request. 
and usually they close things pretty quickly so they'll get back to you especially if they're in the office and like I said they do have great extended night and weekend hours for you so I'm just gonna stop really quick and see if any of you guys have any questions I'll unmute you all okay so how are you guys doing so far uh, doing very well so far awesome um, I had an issue with the pop-up blocker thingy okay. uh, I tried uh, fixing it and it's still showing me an X um, you fix it on your computer did you refresh the screen or is it still an X it was still an X okay what are you using well it wants me to put in uh, an address down an address like a um, what's it called the um, like the Niagara Community College dot com or you like know. An, an email or a web yeah. address a web address so. oh, okay um, are you <laughs> using <I'll stop> it. <laughs> are you using Chrome or Firefox Chrome okay um, let's try this way you said you already disabled pop-ups so you went to your settings and where are we going right here <laughs> got our settings and we're gonna scroll down to pop-ups with mine already sorry one second that was the thing once you're in settings it doesn't show you pop-ups yeah one second I always get I have lost to I had to literally go into the computer. <laughs> right. Okay. All right. Um, do you see where it says show advanced settings? Mm-hmm. Okay. Did it pop up there for you? Content. Is it under privacy? I believe it should be. Because it didn't. It didn't. Okay. Well, I mean, privacy. Privacy is there, but you know the. There it is. No, that's plugins. It oh. should be right under plugins. Okay. Okay. All right. So privacy and plugins. And then you can change it to allow all show, um, sites to show pop-ups, but I don't think that would be the best for the rest of the websites that you're going to look at. Right. So, okay. So, if you want to do um, manage the exceptions, mm -hmm. the website for Blackboard, if you want, I can tell you what that is. Hopefully, okay. That work. Okay. So, if you're in this area where you can type it in, mm -hmm. you're going to type in BB Niagara. Okay cc dot sln dot suny dot edu and that is the home page for blackboard so it should definitely okay. work all right okay. i just want to make sure you know before we get all started here and oh yeah no problem yeah because some things if the pop-up blocker is not in um, disabled like some of the things you click on in your course it might not pop up for you so that's right so go back to Blackboard, um, refresh it, okay, and hopefully it'll change for you. If not, we can try some other things. Okay. Okay. That was my question. <laughs> no problem. And um, Jonathan, you joined us a little late, but are you caught up with us? I. It's not Jonathan. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to have to deal with the pop-up window separately later, too. I've got Firefox, and I have the same question, so I'll play with that later. Okay. Um, Firefox, I think the way to get to settings looks a little different. So I got to where I had to set the cookies. I just wasn't sure if I, what web address, what URL to use, so I'll do the BB Niagara one. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully, that'll definitely work. Sometimes when you type in a website um, and you first go into it the first time, it'll say, like, do you want to allow pop-ups? If you see that, then definitely hit yes, but just depends on the browser sometimes. Right. Okay. 
So I am going to um, go over like a clip, like a course now. So I'm just going to meet you guys again. But again, if you have any questions, go ahead. You can type them into the chat area or unmute yourself and go ahead and ask away. All right. So right now I logged in as a student. So these are the courses that I'm enrolled in. And I'm just going to click on this first one. Your courses are going to look um, different than mine. Some will have more information on the side. They might even be customized a little bit where these don't look the same or maybe the colors are different, but we should all have a general um, outline. So in this area, you might have a start here button, which is recommended for your professors to have. And that's awesome. I would definitely start there and see what your instructor has to say about your course, him or herself, and um, just what you're going to get started into in that class. But I am going to get started in this area right here. Um, my course says learning modules or content. That is where most of your information in the class is going to be held. Um, it might just say content, it might just say learning modules. Again, just depends on your professor. So I'm going to click on that. And as you see, this course has a lot of information in it, a lot of different um, projects, journals. These are what we call discussion boards. I'll show you those. Um, some people can even put videos right into here and other folders. So it's always good to check it out and see um, what exactly your professor has in the learning content. Um, I would advise to start with anything that says like course information syllabus or course info documents, anything like that, we can click on this one and I'll show you. It'll have hopefully another welcome or contact information, um, some more services that we offer at the school, the learning outcomes, requirements that you're going to need to run like Blackboard or requirements that you might need for your course. and especially right here, you have how you earn your grade and expectations for the class. So it's always good to go through all the information that your teacher has left out for you in these areas. So I'm just going to click on, um, if you see an item like this that has a little piece of paper, it looks like some notes, that is going to be a file. So whenever you see that and you're like, well, there's no information underneath it, always click on the title. It should bring you somewhere. If it doesn't, if it brings you to something like says you can't see it um, and you know it should be shown, then you can definitely give me a call and we'll check that out and see what it is. But you should always um, be brought to a different screen when you see pages like this. If you see a symbol with a piece of paper and the globe, that's going to be like an internet site. So this link right here, if you click on it, will take you to a new page. As you can see, it opens up. And right now it's taking me to what I clicked on, disability disclosure. Um, let me show you some more symbols to get familiar with in Blackboard. Um, we'll go back to learning modules. And like I said, those were folders, so that's going to house more information. These right here are what we call discussions. If you see like a little tack on a piece of paper, um, a lot of people in online classes, they will use discussions to get students to interact with them and with other students. That might be how a lot of your things are graded as well. Um, your interaction with your other peers and interaction on the topics that you're learning. So make sure you know that when you see a discussion link like this, you always have to click on it. And it'll bring you up to a screen similar to this. If no one has posted anything, it'll just say something like no content or um, no discussions yet, click to add one. And this is a discussion blog. Let me see what the other, other discussion looks like for you. Okay. That's the one I want. Um, I just clicked on a forum. It was a discussion called Introduce Yourself. I can almost guarantee that most of your classes that you're going to look at are going to have an introdu um, 
like an introduce yourself or an icebreakers section. Um, this is probably going to be your first assignment in your class along with like a computer backup plan that I'll show you. A lot of teachers like to get the students involved the first week, test out how to use the different areas in Blackboard and to introduce yourself to your peers so you know like you're not the only one maybe um, taking extra classes or say you're a mom going back to school for the first time. It just gets everyone involved, shows people like you're not alone. So if you get into your discussion forum, again, to create a post, all you're going to do is click this button right here in the left hand side that says create thread. And if you're going through with your class, you might not be able to see other threads because there might not be any yet. Give your test blog. You always have to put a subject. It'll tell you like the fields required right there. And then you can begin typing away, you know, whatever you have to say. If you are doing a blog or maybe an assignment that's in, sorry, a discussion, and your professor has asked you to like upload extra attachments, um, maybe they're like supporting documents for something that you're talking about, you can also do that here. Um, after you leave your message, there is a part where you can do attachments. So you can browse your computer and that'll let you pull up any file that you have saved on your computer or if you've saved it into the content collection I showed you guys earlier, you can browse any of those things and save it. Uh, once you've finished, all you have to do is hit the submit button and it'll show you what you've posted. Um, to get detailed information on what people have left, you're going to always want to click on the links and it'll pop up to what you have. In a lot of courses, um, discussions, they are graded kind of in three parts depending on your teacher. They could be graded a little differently, but most of the times a teacher is going to want you to go over some material or go over a topic or something, post about it, and then you're also going to have to reply to your peers and maybe say like what you liked about that or, you know, discuss with them as well to get you involved in the course. So to respond to someone who's made a post, I'll go back and show you. You're just going to click on it again. Sorry, it's loading. Click on the post you'd like to respond to. You can read it. And you can hit the reply button, which will just bring you to another screen to type out your reply. Or you can hit quote, and that will quote what the person has said. I'll show you that. And then you can also begin replying right underneath. Same thing as well, you can just submit. And then that'll be how you respond to other people's um, threads or discussions. So again, each class is different, but I do know a lot of instructors, if you're taking online classes, will want you to respond to your classmates um, to get involved in discussions. So it's always a helpful thing to know. And while we're here, I'm actually just going to show you this at the top of the screen under the logo for the college. Um, you see how there's a few different, um, it's called the breadcrumb trail. But you see how there's a few different things that we went into. This shows you exactly where you are in your course. So we went to the discussion board, we went into a forum, and we posted to a thread. If you ever want to go back without hitting the internet browser right here and going back, you can just click on it. It's always a helpful thing to know how to get back to your class. All right. And the next thing I want to show you is an assignment. And we'll see if you guys are still hanging on with me. So that was a discussion where you see the little thumbnail, um, sorry, the thumbtack on the piece of paper. This is what an assignment looks like. It's going to be a piece of paper with a ruler and a pencil. Anything like this, say if you see information attached, you can definitely click on it and download it. But to do the assignment, you're going to have to click on the title as well. Sometimes it throws people off when they're looking at it, but nothing like pops up for them. Just always make sure you're clicking on titles to get to where you need to go. 
And I was testing this out earlier, so you actually see my graded um, attempt right here. It pops up if you've already graded. So I'm going to go to a different one so you can see the beginning screen. Okay. So apparently I tested that one as well. No problem. There's more. Okay. So when you click on an assignment, this is hopefully what you're going to see from your um, instructor. You're always going to get a due date, a due time, and the amount of points that's possible. If they've created a rubric, I highly suggest you go through it before you submit any of your work. A lot of teachers will put the rubric in the information modules um, ahead of time so you can maybe print those out and hold on to them or just have them available so you know what you're going to be expected of when you're being graded. So you can see for this one, these are what they're going to be graded on. I'm going to exit out of there. If you see an assignment that says, um, like, do you agree to submitting your paper to SafeAssign, that is what Blackboard uses as a plagiarism tool. So especially for final papers or something like that, your professor may request you to submit an assignment and have it sent into a plagiarism tool. So just be sure to always check, always cite your stuff, and make sure that you click this box before you submit your assignment. Um, this happens to be like a final paper. So if it is something longer, um, you're probably going to end up attaching a file like a Microsoft Word or maybe a PowerPoint. You can see these are all the formats that are accepted. So to submit, you would click on Browse My Computer or the content where you ever you have your assignment saved. Find what you want it to upload. And you'll see that it pops up right here. That is what is attached. Make sure if you save files like repeatedly, uh, maybe you saved an updated version of your assignment, make sure you're always submitting the right file. So it'll definitely give you another chance to see Yep, this is exactly what I wanted to submit. If maybe it was a shorter assignment, um, you're going to see this box right here that says Write Submission. If you click on that, it'll bring you to a text box where you can just write what you need to say and what you need to get done. Once you're ready to go, you've hit the Agree to Submit to the Safe Assign. You're going to hit Submit again at the bottom, and you'll be all set. I just want to point out right here where it says add comments. If you type anything into this box, your professor will see it, but it's not what's going to be graded. So any information typed in here is not something your professor can grade. Maybe if you want to just add a note to your professor or something, you can definitely write it there. But just be sure if you ever need to write a submission, you have to look for the right submission box. And then we'll just hit submit. And this is what you'll see after you upload it. Thank you. You'll see your assignment. You can double check to make sure that's what you had. And when your professor grades something, once it gets graded, this is also how you can review and see if they gave you any comment or feedback. So you would go back to your assignment that you submitted. This would pop up. And you can see the grade. If they wrote anything up, it would actually show up right here. If they left you comments as well, you'd see it right here. So I'm going to get out of this paper and hit OK. And it's just going to take me back to my learning modules content. OK, so I'm going to unmute you guys again. Let's see if you have any more questions. Are you guys still doing OK? Yep. Yep. Awesome. All right. So the last thing I want to cover now is communicating in your class. And then once I've hit that, if there's anything you guys want to go through, just let me know. Okay. So in your course, right here on the left-hand side of the menu, you may see a link that says course messages. This, I want to warn you, is not like sending an email to your professor. If you pull this up, you'll see where it says inbox and sent. 
you can create a message, but it's only going to stay right here in the course messages box. It will not be sent out to like your professor's email and they might not see it right away. Um, if you don't see this link in your class, it's probably because your professor turned it off and they don't want to use it. So it just depends on what they're trying to use. I'm going to go back to this. To get in contact with the professor, there might be a send an email link, and that will take you to what I'm about to show you now. So if you do see send an email right here on the left-hand side, you can click on it. Oops, sorry guys. But it'll also bring you up to what I'm going to log into now. It's kind of like a backdoor way to email professor if you don't see the link automatically or if they haven't left you an email and you don't know how to get in touch with them. So on the top of the screen where your name is and you might see an update number, there's a drop down menu. This is called your global navigation. This area will show you all of your information and updates for every class that you're taking. So if it's overwhelming to you, um, you can definitely check it out and browse through it, see how you like it. But if it's too overwhelming to see everything like this all at once, you can just go into your courses individually and check out your grades or check out your messages and even announcements as well. So I'm just going to go back to the home page and show you the email tool. So once again, when you pull this down, you're going to see um, a menu right here for tools. If you click on that, you will get a link to send an email. When you hit send an email, it's going to bring up every course that you're participated in. And I'm just going to click on this one right here and bring you to the send an email screen. You have the option of sending an email to all the users, which are going to be all the students and all the teachers in your class. You have an option to send it to groups and teaching assistants as well if there are any, or instructors. This is the one you're going to want to click on if you need to get in contact with your instructor. You'll see up here that it'll send it to all the people listed in your course as an instructor. Just add a title, sorry, a subject. Write out your message. and you will hit send once you're finished and need to send it off. When you hit submit though, right here at the bottom, just know that this is sending an email to your professor to their Outlook account. When they reply back to your email, it's not gonna come here to Blackboard. This, um, when they reply back, it's going to be sent to your T-Wolf email account. So if you're logging into Blackboard and looking for the email, it's not where you're gonna find it. Your professor is going to respond and it's going to be sent to T-Wolves, so it's always important to check that T-Wolves email account. Um, if any of you need help with um, finding an email account and forwarding it to like one you may check more often, you can definitely talk to me later and I can try to figure that out for you. But for right now, that's basically all the overview that I have. Um, do you guys have any questions? I'm going to unmute you. All right. Sorry, one second. There you go. So how did you guys do? Are you okay? Yes. Awesome. Is there anything that you need help with in particular as of right now? Well, you might have covered this in the first few minutes before mm -hmm. I got on, but if we're signed up for an online class, how, when do we have access to the lecture or Oh, good question. Well, right now we are in the go live um, week preview. Mm -hmm. So if you have your login credentials, you can log on right now, mm -hmm. go into your courses and check them out. Um, get started on maybe an introduction that they might have or computer backup plan. Some teachers have that as well. Um, you, so you can do that now, but mm -hmm. classes officially start Monday. But that is a holiday, so most classes will start Tuesday. Okay, and then we can just 
log on to view, will there be a link or something so we can watch the lecture or? Well, it depends on how your professor is doing their class. If they um, have pre-recorded lectures, they'll definitely let you know that you need to log on, watch a video, maybe read something and then do your assignment. But mm -hmm. it just depends on your teacher itself. Okay, so I have to wait to hear back from the teacher to know how we access or when we can access the lectures. Yeah, um, okay. some people might just have uh, written out lectures where they'll give you information they want you to learn, maybe correspond that with some like extra readings and stuff and then have you talk about it in a discussion. That might be how they want to teach their class. Okay. And this all depends on um, your instructor. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Anyone else have any um, more issues or are they all set? I had one. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I had one with the breadcrumb thing. Okay. Um, you know how on the corner uh, where it showed, um, oh, on top it had the names and all that, but on the side it had um, that little blocks next to the, um, the refresh down. Um, are you talking about the one with like the little home next to it? No, no, not that one. Go go down a little bit more. Yep, right there. This? Okay. Um, yes. When you uh, click that, mm -hmm. another box comes up, right? Yep. And it should allow you to see this. Okay. Well, I don't know if it's because of the pop-up blocker that it's not allowing me to it, see it. Right now. It's probably because of the pop-up blocker. Um, the information that gets pulled up is everything that is right there in that menu. It just mm -hmm. comes up in a different screen. Okay. Yeah, but it's going to be all the same information, but I think it's because okay. of the pop-ups. Okay. All right. That's what I wanted to make sure. No okay. problem. So. All right. With this being uh, the first class I've taken online or the first class period, are there any other training videos or, or training lessons I could take to get me more up to speed? Yeah, definitely. Um, if you log in and go to resources and policies, um, like I said, there is a open SUNY orientation. I'll click on it and show you. It's going to look just like a class on how it should be set up. And there's information on um, discussions, assignments, tests, like anything you may need to do. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, and if you have any problems, again, feel free to contact me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Expect to hear from me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be here for you. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome.